In this video, I will show you how to lay out a granny square afghan and then pack it up so it is easy to carry in your project bag while maintaining the order of the squares. Personally, when I do an afghan, I purposefully have no two squares alike. This means you need to have all the squares made so that when you lay it out, you have the colors distributed throughout. I have already fussed over the layout and I decided that this is it. All the squares are right side up. On the right side, you'll see longer strands of yarn in the stitches. Also, on the outer edge, you'll see two loops of the final stitch that's been completed. On the back side, you'll see a lot of little horizontal parts of stitches because that's the way the stitch is formed on the back. A lot of little horizontal lines. And on the edge, you'll only see the one loop. That's how you tell the difference between the wrong side and so the right side. So let's get started. You will need 13 plastic bags and a permanent marker. I prefer a combination of sandwich bags and cork bags with a zipper closure. For our sample afghan, you will need five cork bags and eight sandwich bags. Use cork bags if you want all of your bags to be the same size. By the way, after this project, hang on to the bags as they can be reused over and over again. Label the sandwich bags 1 through 4 and 10 through 13. Label the quart bags 5 through 9. How did I come up with the magic number of 13? Well, it's really quite easy. Add the number of squares across, 6, plus the number of squares high, 8, is 14, minus 1. That gives you 13. That also happens to be the number of diagonal rows in the afghan. To pack up your work, take the single square from row one and place it in bag number one. I like to keep the number forward to me so I know which is the top. And there we have it. That's bag, that's diagonal row number one. Now we're gonna do diagonal row number two. Now notice, I took a piece from the far most right and put it on top of the piece closest to me. Because there's a specific order that we're going to be doing these, and so I want always the piece I'll be using first to be facing up in the little bag. Set that aside. Row three has three pieces. Hence, that's why we use the sandwich bags, because we don't have a lot of pieces in these. Once again, making sure the furthest right piece is on top. The fourth row, we have four pieces. One, two, three, four. And the fifth row, two, three, four, five pieces. Now, as we're getting more pieces, we need a slightly larger bag to accommodate them without really squishing them. I like the, the Ziploc bags because you can press the air out of them, and the, they are very difficult to mix up the pieces in that order. I want you to go two more rows, and this is row six. And this is row seven. Now notice, I'm starting at the center row. That's the center of them. So I'm going to, on this particular one, I'm going to put my seventh row in there. And I started from that edge and came here, just like the other rows. But on this row, I'm going to mark this with a C. I'm going to mark it center. That way, when I pack these up, 
I will be able to know which one is my center row because I'm going to be start doing something different with that. That row I will do absolutely last and I won't touch that row until I'm ready to. We've gone through row 7. You can continue in the same fashion doing row 8, 9, 10, and so on all the way to 13. But what I prefer to do is You'll see in a minute, but I'm going to turn this around so that 13 now is in the same position as the 1 was. And I'm going to package it just that same way. I'm going to take the single number 13 square, row 13, and seal that up. Then I'm going to take the next one and I'm going to stack it from right to left. And that is going to be row 12. And I'm going to repeat the rest of the rows this exact same way. Row 11 and so on. In the next video, I will show you how to unpack the granny squares as you crochet the afghan together. If you like what you see, please subscribe.